So this is it. This is the new DC-6 that we are turning into an airplane house, in case you guys have not already heard. But this will be a two-bedroom, one-bath, full-on airplane house. Of course, now that it's on property, you might be wondering how we got it here on property. It certainly did not look like this when we first got a hold of it. That's what we're going to tell you about today, that whole process of getting this thing roadable ready not ready to fly but ready to go down the road so we could actually get it here to the flight mike alpha pilot lodge so when we first showed up there the airplane looked like this and we had to make it look like this and we showed up on a monday evening to get a quick look at it and had an Airbnb booked up there in Fairbanks through Thursday thinking that, hey, by the end of day Thursday, we're gonna have all these little parts and pieces loaded onto this cute pink trailer here. All the other parts and pieces will go inside the fuselage and we'll have this 105 foot long fuselage loaded onto a 93 foot long trailer with a little bit of overhang on the front and back to get this thing down the road. And we'll make it as narrow as possible because preferably the trucking company wanted it at 10 foot six wide although that was the actual width of the fuselage tube itself. And we were trying to keep costs down with minimum pilot cars and things like that. So Tuesday morning rolled around, we got there bright and early and said, hey, let's try to j just jump on this thing and see what we can get done. We started off with the game plan of, hey, Tuesday we're gonna go ahead and remove the wing tips. Now the, the first three or four feet of wing tip was already removed, but the actual wing tip, what I'm calling the wing tip is like this 27 foot long wing tip section that's nine feet wide from each side. And then hopefully we'll also remove the vertical stabilizer and Tuesday's gonna be a great day. We had gone to Lowe's the night before, picked up a bunch of these pallets of cinder blocks because we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into and a whole bunch of six by six by eight foot long pieces of lumber to try to use to block up the aircraft as we went ahead and cut the wings off and retracted the landing gear and got it loaded on the trailer and all this good stuff. Of course, we also brought every tool that I possibly had, even things like generators, plasma cutters, every cordless tool DeWalt makes to try to get this thing done. We weren't really sure what we were getting ourselves into. Luckily, the folks at Everett's, well, they're the only company in the world really left that still flies these things on a regular basis, maintains them all, and they have all the knowledge in the world about these DC-6 aircraft. I would never actually worked on any of these before in my life, let alone cut the wings off of one to try to get it onto a trailer, so we were definitely getting in a little bit over our heads. Uh, that trip to Lowe's Monday night was rather expensive, buying a few extra tools and all that stuff, but the Everts guys were super cool and had all the specialty tools that we didn't have for those crazy spline drive nuts and things holding the wings on to help us get all that stuff off. Of course, because they work on these things so often, also they had all the cool stuff like the harnesses to actually remove the wing tip really safely using the crane and all the right tools and equipment on site. Super friendly folks, awesome place uh, to actually just be kind of hanging out watching the airplanes come in and out of there all day long while we were working on this project. So yeah, getting that first big part off took way longer than I ever anticipated, but it did feel like a real accomplishment because we really saw some real progress. It was like, hey, maybe we can actually do this thing. Maybe we're not totally just like out of our minds trying to move this airplane Look, down the road. Christmas came early. Santa's brought us a little elf that's just hammering away, making toys. Are you gonna sign my maintenance log? Oh, totally, yeah, absolutely gonna do that. What in the world? This was, uh. This was such a good idea, wasn't it? Just, yeah, let's go ahead and take this uh, DC-6 on down the road to 
to the Fly My Galva Pile Lodge. What could possibly go wrong? They said it would be fun. That's what they said. Can you believe that that's the bolt? No. Your life depends on right there. That little rusty corroded bolt. Now we got our little trailer slid out of there over to the other side, start working on the right wing tip now after lunch into the afternoon, thinking we're gonna get this all done. Some of these bolts were pretty difficult to get to and it just made more sense to cut through them rather than try to break them all free. Some of these we did break free because we were gonna bolt these wings back on. Others, it just made more sense to cut through because you don't really need all of them just for the airplane to sit there statically and not be flying anywhere. So whacking away at these things, especially the main bolts going through that main spar holding this wingtip on, Pretty serious hardware there. It says there's only eight minutes of video available. What Steph's really saying is you better hurry up and I'm going, oh no, totally, we're gonna get this done in less than eight minutes. Totally gonna be off. Well, fast forward about an hour later and a lot more cutting, a lot more wiggling, a lot more breaking things free. Yes, we finally had the right wing tip ready to come off there. So we were successful getting the two wingtips off of there. Unfortunately, that did burn up most of the day, and you can see how big these things really are once, uh, once I'm standing on it. They're a little bit bigger than they look, and they're pretty dang heavy too. It's not like lifting the wing off of a 172. But anyways, thought we would have time to get to the vertical stabilizer, and we really did not. We did at least break a few bolts free in the tail there. It literally took us a seven foot long breaker bar to break free some of those nuts that were on there that probably hadn't been off in quite a while because we were losing Isaac the very next day. And so it took him and I to break those free. And the next day, day two, well, that was just Steph and I. It started off with a beautiful sunrise, C46 taken off. And it was time to get that vertical down. And of course, figured, hey, at least by lunchtime we'll have the vertical down, and then we'll be able to move on to the other parts, perhaps making some cuts in the main sections of the wings, figuring out how to get this airplane, the fuselage, up into the air to make it ready to be loaded onto the trailer. This should be a good day, nothing uh, should take too long here. Although inside of every single one of those little inspection hatches, all along the edge of that vertical stabilizer, there are six big bolts holding it on, six big like one inch diameter bolts holding that thing onto the airframe. There's also about 150 little AN3 or basically 3 16 diameter bolts with a 3 8 head on them holding the skins onto the airframe, making that seam nice and tight. So Steph had her hand in there for hours and hours with a little flex head ratchet wrench, breaking free as many of those as we could get before we were able to hook on the harness. We got about 70 of them broken, at least elite, probably more than half. And then it was time to just hook on that harness. The harness wasn't crazy strong. It was certainly strong enough to hold the vertical, but not enough to just tear metal and rip those bolts out. So we did have to kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit to be able to get in there with the grinder and the sawzall, be able to climb up on there and slice through the last few bits of those bolts. Those six one inch diameter bolts, those big heavy ones will be more than enough to reattach the vertical when we get it home to our place. Uh, and then all those little three eighths bolts will probably just go ahead and score around the seam there, around where it bolts up, uh, around where it meets the fuselage and just TIG weld that whole thing to permanently attach it to the airframe. I'm not too worried about reinstalling a hundred plus little three eight diameter bolts there. They're quite difficult to get to. And of course, once we got the thing broken free, just wiggling it left and right, trying to get a little bit of daylight showing there so we could see where it was hung up. We were able to get the last few snags. Kind of sketchy always getting those last few snags, especially the last few wires when this thing, when you know it's ready to break free and go swing somewhere. And oh, just kind of, you know, duck there a little bit and try to make sure it misses your head as uh, as it swings free there. And so of course that did take Steph and I 
pretty much the entire day to get that thing down onto the ground. It was pretty late in the day by the time we finally had it down, already way past lunchtime. And all that was really left to do to try to make the day useful was take some measurements because we're going to have to create one of these harnesses ourselves when we get back to the pilot lodge to get this thing reinstalled and then go ahead and cut off the uh, little nose there of that vertical stabilizer because we had to get this thing again down to about eight or nine feet wide to be legal to go down the road on our trailer behind the pickup truck. And that was pretty much it for day two. Now, of course, day three was rolling around Thursday. We were feeling optimistic for day three. It was the big day to get the fuselage loaded, get all the other parts loaded onto the trailer and get the wings cut off and get those loaded onto some sort of a trailer maybe. Of course, I started the day at like 5 a.m. going to Lowe's and returning all those cinder blocks that turns out we did not need along with some of those six by six by eight foot long pieces of lumber that we paid like 70 bucks each for to get some of our money back out of that deal. And yeah, it was gonna be a little bit of a challenge to get all this done in one day. Wasn't quite sure how to proceed, but between Steph and Buck, one of the guys that was helping us there from Everett's, they had the brilliant idea of, hey, why don't you go ahead and call this trailer over right now? Get them to drop off this trailer now so we can use the trailer and use the landing gear that's still attached to actually put nitrogen into the struts, lift the whole airplane by extending the struts on the main gear, get the trailer up underneath it, and then bleed the nitrogen out of the struts and set the fuselage right down on it. We won't have to use a gigantic crane to lift up the whole fuselage onto the trailer, which was a brilliant idea. Luckily, there's other people there besides me thinking of these things to make it all work because, yeah, we are kind of just making it up as we go here. And then when that extendable 53 foot long trailer that extends out to 93 feet long, that giant long Manac trailer showed up, it was time to get the nose gear retracted, lift the nose up into the air, swing that nose gear up into the wheel well, ratchet strap up there to hold that thing up. That is a heavy, heavy nose gear. And have these little lines on there just to catch any sort of 5606 hydraulic fluid. Yes, this thing uses 5606, not Skydraw. It is so old that it does use that red hydraulic fluid throughout the hydraulic system. So we tried to capture all that so we're not spilling anything on the ramp there. And then, yeah, it was as easy as back the trailer up. Took a couple times back and forth, but we got it backed up right underneath there and was ready pretty much to break those wings off and set that fuselage right down on there. Of course, before breaking the wings off, we were cutting them with just a regular old little 15 amp corded DeWalt saw. And that got us about two and a half inches deep into the aluminum through the spars. And then we brought in kind of the big guns, which was a 16 inch gas powered uh, saw with a cutoff wheel there. The big key there was getting down through the spar caps. These are meaty, meaty spars, heavy duty. And the spar cap is not just like a half inch or something down into the wing. It's actually pretty well reinforced metal and the, the webbing of the spar itself, this part in here, the webbing between the spar caps was reinforced several inches down into the wing. We had to get through the meat of that structure because we knew the webbing of the spar would fail very easily, but those spar caps and really the, the eye beam portion of it, the top and bottom of that eye is incredibly strong and sturdy, obviously. These things have been around for like 70 years. There's a reason that they're still flying right now and uh, we had to cut through that if there was any chance of actually being able to break these wings off just with a simple forklift. So after going through the top of the wing, and it was many, many passes to get through that stuff, going through the top of the wing, not such a bad deal. Uh, pretty comfortable actually to work up there. The big key there was being sure that the wing wasn't just gonna fail and fall off, which was a little sketchy, but we were fairly confident that it wasn't, especially with the fuselage being supported by that trailer and the main landing gear still holding up most of that weight of the wing. The downside to this was, of course, having to do the same exact thing on the bottom of the wing, which was a lot less comfortable, uh, as there's sparks and debris falling in your face, a little bit of hydraulic oil and stuff still dripping down. Uh, it's kind of miserable, but obviously using uh, proper PPE, safety glasses, respirator, all that good stuff, was a pretty good call there. And it had just gotten to the point where it was like, hey, we were supposed to already be heading south with this airplane today, Let's just do what we can. It's late in the day. It's about 7 p.m. already. It's still light in Alaska, pretty late into late September, early October here. So uh, light really wasn't that big of an issue. Obviously, it would have been nice if it was light till midnight or later uh, if we had been doing this in June. But 
We wanted to get done as much as we possibly could, well we could, and it was pretty clear at this point uh, that, well, Steph was being a good sport and was like, yeah, we can go ahead and stay an extra day because otherwise there's going to be an extra trip up to Fairbanks to get this thing done. And we were so, so close. So after making those cuts, those scores through the wings, it was time to start tugging, pushing and pulling with the forklift, trying to crack through this thing. Uh, the groaning and the creaking and cracking was pretty hard to listen to there as we're trying to break through this wing and it took quite a bit of up and down on it to get it to break free. Finally, we were confident that we had it broken. There was still a lot of internal structure holding it together, but it was late enough in the day that it was time to say, hey, we'll come back and finish this up tomorrow. We'll have a whole other day tomorrow and hopefully get these things off separated and loaded on the trailer. We were pretty exhausted at this point. It had been a pretty long, hard three days of work. So we were looking forward to a very good, successful, hopefully and productive day four. Day four started off with, hey, it's time to get these wings off. And we were pretty excited because we had already at this point cut through those outer skins, cut through the stringers, cut through the spars. And it was just a matter of really wiggling these things free, getting the crane to be, you know, overhead supported with that strap, making sure we were holding the whole wing and it wasn't just gonna fall. And of course we had to get that landing gear retracted somehow or another. And as we were using the crane to kind of lift the wing up and bend the wing, opening up a little bit more space for me to reach in there with a cutoff wheel and a grinder and sawzall and all that stuff, cutting through hydraulic lines and heat ducts, uh, control cables, all sorts of rather important things, more electrical wires than you would imagine, uh, considering there's not a whole lot of electronic stuff going on out in that wing. Probably a lot of stuff to do with the engines and whatnot. But either way, getting through all of that and then finally popping that gear free so that it would be uh, not over-centered anymore, got the gear pin pulled so that we could retract that main landing gear, which is heavy, like really heavy. Those tires each weigh way more than I do. Uh, let alone the rims, the strut assembly, all that other stuff. And so, finally got that thing broken free so that we could actually lower this wing down, get the gear retracted, ratchet strap the gear up into the wheel well to hold it up out of the way. Then it was a matter of just wiggling on that wing a little bit more, opening up some more spaces, reaching in there, cutting through some more stuff, and finally we broke that wing free and that felt really good. It was a huge relief to see that wing come off, set it off to the side and say, you know what? This is actually happening. This is gonna work. We've got the wing off to the side. The fuselage is on the trailer. We just gotta do this one more time. And what could possibly go wrong? And then we'll be in great shape here. I mean, really, what could possibly go wrong? This one went so smoothly. Let's go ahead and, and just get started on this other one. Well, we went ahead and got started on the other one, moved the crane over there, put some straps on it, hooked it all up felt good that the crane was supporting it really well. We went ahead and reached in there to go ahead and start cutting away at a few of the lines holding it together. Obviously there was just these two small hydraulic lines that of course, very obvious, were not entirely holding the wing on to the aircraft. There's a whole lot of other stuff, cables and wires and pulleys and things further up into the front part of the wing that was actually holding it on. Clearly this stuff I was cutting through was not holding it on, and even if it was, the wing had straps on it and it was hooked up to the crane so it wouldn't just, you know, like, fall. 